I think this would probably be a little bit easier to do after the sun's been on in a few hours. But uh, I'd say it's frozen down about three inches. But uh, yeah, there's parsnip. There's parsnip. Hi, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm out here in the garden. It's a Saturday morning. We're about three weeks into January 2020. It's been cold, negative, uh, you know, negative double digits below zero sort of thing uh, last last couple weeks and uh, we're into the full freeze of winter. And uh, for those that follow my channel or if you're new, I use uh, various forms of, uh, you know, microclimates, I guess you could call them, in the garden. These are um, domed uh, hoop houses made with uh, wire remesh. I have other little crows flying overhead here. <laughs> uh, other things I use in the garden as well for various reasons. I'll get into that over the course of the video. Uh, but I've been doing this for a number of years now and trying different things, trying different tricks. And I thought I'd do a video just speaking to some observations I've made, lessons learned, tips and tricks and stuff like that for using these sorts of things in your garden. So uh, let's get started. Um, first I'm going to talk about why I use these in my garden. Uh, there's two two main reasons. Uh, number one is that it turns any bed you want into a cold frame, basically, right? Uh, if you build your beds of a dimension that will accept one of these, right, if you sort of build both things with that in mind, uh, in any given year any bed can function like a cold frame, so it gives you a lot of versatility. Um, number two, they're pretty cheap. It's a lot cheaper to have a garden bed and one of these, right, because you can just slap one of these together for about 20 bucks. Um, the wire remesh, um, sort of, uh, uh, I've got videos on how to make these and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe $10, $12 a sheet and then just need a couple, uh, couple 2 by 3s to get it together. With three 2 by 3s is all you need. So, uh, main reason is that I, that I like to have them in the garden is that they will uh, accelerate the spring thaw and they accelerate germination and they, they move everything ahead in your garden so with one of these over a bed if you if you put it over there let's say a month ahead of time or just leave it there all winter um, uh, March can be like April April can be like May May can be like June right in general right that's the general rule of thumb so and sometimes even earlier than that I've had years where using this system I've gotten um, spinach to germinate in February right that's I mean late February like you know it's like so at the last week of February I've certainly had many years where I've gotten things, cold hardy things, to germinate in March. Whereas most people, and most of the garden, the garden I, mean, I don't have these everywhere in the garden, I think that would be impractical, um, but uh, most of the soil is still frozen in March, and a good deal of the soil is frozen in April, and we even have years where the soil is frozen in May and even June here, right? It's, it's a bizarre sort of place, even though it's zone 6A, um, we uh, tend to have a, a it, spring tends to take forever to get started here. Um, and uh, and fall starts early. <laughs> so, <laughs> of all the zone six A's you could pick, this is not the ideal one, I suppose. But uh, we persevere, right? Um, so the main reason I, I like using these in the garden is to minimize the extent to which the beds freeze, um, accelerate the thawing out of the soil in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the spring, and allow things to get uh, planted in the ground early. Right? Even my heat loving things, I, sow every, I direct sow everything outside. So uh, I direct sow my tomatoes like the first week of May sort of thing, you know, give or take. Right? I, I, I use a system called phenology to determine these things, but let's just say for, for the sake of simplicity, you know, first week of May, uh, I direct seed tomatoes under these and, uh, and they germinate and they grow and I get tomatoes before the end of the season, so it works out fine. Um, but the other reason to have these things in the garden is that, um, you know, if, if you're getting into fall, and let's say you don't have a place to put your root vegetables, or you um, don't have enough time to get them out of the ground before the ground freezes because of other, you know, constraints in your life, or maybe you just don't feel, <laughs> don't feel like harvesting all of your root vegetables, uh, the kind of root vegetables that can take being cold. Uh, maybe you don't feel like harvesting them all. You just can't, just can't get, can't gather the will to do it. Uh, you're feeling lazy or whatever. I stick one of these domes over the bed and uh, you know if you're lucky the soil will remain um, accessible to you. It might freeze the top inch or two might freeze and this all depends on where you live and how cold it can get and 
even more important than how cold it can get, how much sun you have, right? If you have a string of days where it's uh, completely overcast and minus two with one of these domes, and by contrast, you have a string of days where it's minus 10 Celsius, but very sunny. Uh, I can almost guarantee you, uh, unless you've got a lot of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, biological action happening inside the cold frame, you know, composting and stuff like that, um, the minus two overcast conditions will cause a soil to freeze more than the sunny minus 10 um, days, or even sunny minus 15 days. Basically, as long as it's sunny, right, when it's sunny is when these things really get going. You've got two things going on underneath the dome, and this one here has a bit of, needs a bit of a repair, as you can see. Um, but there's two things going on under the dome. You've got the sun passing through the plastic, uh, heating the, the soil or the mulch or whatever you got in there, right? And, um, you know, creating a greenhouse, a little microclimate. And the heat is staying in there. Instead, instead of all that heat bleeding off, right, you've got a greenhouse effect, basically, right? Uh, you know, the sun's hitting everything all over the place, but it's very cold outside. In here, the sun goes in, heats the thermal mass, the soil basically, that's in here, and it's able to create its own little atmosphere, a, a warm atmosphere. On a really sunny day, if I come out here at 2 in the afternoon, uh, even if it's minus 10 or minus 15 Celsius, it might be 20 under one of these, right? So that's going on. But also, if enough heat can be generated, and if that little layer where the soil and the mulch meet, all my beds are mulched, or relatively mulched, um, if that little layer can warm up, right, there's microorganisms that are there, um, they will start to become active and there's some composting will start to happen and that'll generate its own heat as well. That's a minor effect, but it's still part of the equation, right? Um, and that's why even after the sun goes down, you might get another, you know, hour of, of some kind of heat production because there's basically a living thing in there that's working and uh, using energy up. So um, that's the two things that's going on. But the main thing is the sun. You've got to have that sun or it's really not working. Um, so if, if you've got your root vegetables outside and it's sunny and you're getting, you know, a, a reasonable amount of sunny days, uh, they should keep the, uh, the soil from freezing up so much that you can't get into them. And this is a good day to do a little test of that because we just had a very cold week where, you know, it was like negative double digits at night and for a good portion of the day as well. Um, you know, we had a lot of snow and that sort of stuff. So at the end of the video, I'm going to harvest some parsnips and see uh, one of these beds here. I haven't popped the lid off of it in, in, in weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks, uh, maybe a month or more. So we'll see uh, how accessible the soil is in there. But let me take you around and show you some things that I've observed with these beds uh, in the meantime. So it's, it's early in the morning right now, and it's around um, you know 8.30 a.m. And the sun is up, barely up. It's just most of the garden is in the shade, and just this corner here. <laughs> is the first little bit of sunlight we've got. And uh, you can see that um, there's, during the day, there's heat in here, and it causes, you know, water vapor uh, to uh, collect in the air that's inside the dome. And because heat goes up, um, it creates a, sort of a frost layer on the top, right? So, right, so there's frost on the outside. Right, but there's also frost. Um, so this is your hair anyway. There's also frost on the inside, right? So it's not very good for the hands. So I mean, a lot of people will ask me, you know, do you water them? Do you do this? Do you do that? It's kind of a closed system. So the, the you know, as it warms up and as as heat starts to collect in here, um, all of this water will run down, and uh, this will become clear and it'll just get more and warmer and warmer in there. So the entire inside of this, even though it'll still be below freezing during the day, the entire inside of this will be thawed, right? And that uh, heat will be getting in and warming up the thermal mass. Um, you might notice that this, that this uh, particular uh, dome, um, I need to repair this section here, of course, um, but um, you might notice that I've got tape everywhere. This, uh, what's it called, sheathing tape? called tuck tape. If you went to a hardware store and said you're going to need tuck tape, they'd probably know what you mean, but basically it's an exterior tape for, uh, you know, uh, the vapor barrier you'd put around a house. Uh, so it's a really, really sticky, tough tape, and, um, you know, it costs more than packing tape, but packing tape will not really stand up to being outdoors, whereas this stuff, may a roll might cost 10 or 12 bucks, but it'll last you a very, very, 
If all you're using it for is this, it'll last you a very long time, and you might find it's more useful than duct tape in many ways. Um, anyway, I like to repair these with this. And that's another point. So uh, I created these using uh, wire remesh. And so there's a metal underneath here. And over time, the uh, metal rubs against, this is six mil poly, polyethylene. Over time, the metal rubs against this and uh, it, wear, it will wear through. You know, I estimate that maybe you'll get five years out of a sheet. This is a four by eight sheet of poly uh, plastics. It's relatively cheap. It's kind of a shame uh, from an environmental point of view, but um, maybe five years. I don't know. I mean, this is probably year, year three or four for this one here. And I, I've done some repairs, but that's fine. Um, you just sort of stay with it. But in terms of design, um, the good thing about using, I know other, uh, there's other channels, One Yard Revolution in particular, he uses um, uh, PVC pipes and has a very unique way of putting them together. Uh, I, I know it works for him, but I, I watched what he did and I didn't like his method. I prefer this. I think they're easier to slap together. They're cheaper to slap together. They're quicker to slap together, I think. Um, and I also think they're just stronger and more rigid. We get a lot of weather here, a lot of wind. We get hurricanes, we get snow. And I know they get all that stuff in Chicago where he, where he lives as well. Um, but I would, I would estimate that being on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean is a bit more of an extreme environment. Um, and we get a lot of snow here. And I'm sure it's a lot of snow there too. Um, but uh, I think they're, they're ribbings, right? Uh, for me, for the kind of snow we get, we get a lot of heavy, wet snow and that sort of stuff. Uh, I would, you need a lot of, um, what do you call it, like the, 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 the actual metal underneath here, you need a grid basically, you need a matrix, you need webbing, you need, I'm not finding the right term here, but basically this mesh, right, you want it as, you know, each rib that goes across, you want them as close together as possible, right, and the side supports, you want them as close together as possible, otherwise the plastic will bend and it will dip and uh, it, it will, uh, collect water and so on and so forth. Uh, I like the wire remesh because once you form it into shape, it's, it's very stiff and it just seems to hold its shape uh, very well. So I like that approach. Um, although, I, th I think there's some merit to using, you know, when these ones finally wear out, I mean, this plastic sort of been through the ringer. When I rebuild these, assuming the metal's still good, uh, I think I might put something like this is a snow fencing. Um, I might put something like this between the metal and the plastic. So I'd have the, the metal wire remesh and then the snow fencing and then the plastic over it just to keep the plastic from rubbing against the metal. Right, the metal's a little bit rough because it rusts and stuff like that. I'm sure there's some way to. You know, if you painted it with 10 layers of shrem clad or something like that, it might keep it from, uh, you know, rusting. Probably not. <laughs> very humid where I live, very wet environment where I live. Um, but I think if you did it that way, um, it would uh, prolong the life of the plastic. It would also provide a little bit more support. I mean, you'd, you wouldn't be getting as much light. This would cause some degree of shade, but probably negligible. Um, I guess, uh, suppose you could use PVC pipe to make a ribs and, and stretch this over a piece of PVC pipe and then you'd have a rust proof thing. But I don't know how well this will stand up to the UV and how brittle it will become. Uh, in various places where I've used it elsewhere, I find over time it does become brittle. So and I'm sure there's different uh, materials this can be made from. Some are less susceptible to uh, UV degradation than others. but. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to go through all the trouble of making one of these and have this get brittle after a couple of years. Um, but if you've got this over the metal, you know, the metal is doing the bulk of the carrying of the weight, so I think it would um, last a lot longer. So yeah, that would be my advice for someone that hasn't built these and, and likes my design and would want to use these. The wire remesh and the 2x3. Uh, maybe, um, I mean, you, this works fine, right? But it, uh, if you're getting a lot of snow and a lot of weather and a lot of ice, um, the, uh, the polyethylene will, will wear through and you will get holes. I mean, you can, you can fix it with tape and all that sort of stuff, but I think it's very, po there's a little hole right there. But I think it would last longer if you put something like this between the metal and the plastic. 
another thing I like to use, because uh, these are really quick and easy to make for a microclimate to keep things from freezing, is just these, uh, you just make a wooden square and you stretch some plastic over it and you slap that down. But a trick with using these is they still, I have found anyway, you want to maintain a dome any way you can with these. And that way water won't gather on them, the snow will be more likely to blow off, uh, you know, if it, if it thaws out or whatever, the, the, the water has a place to go, right? Uh, if, if it becomes concave, you know, if it's got a dip in it, it'll just gather water, it'll gather ice and that sort of stuff, right? It'll gather snow. You want it to be domed in some way. So, so with this one here, let's see if I can get into this. Uh, what I've done is I just stuck some... Uh, stuck some spruce boughs here and I sort of piled them up in a way so that they were sort of uh, higher in the middle than on the sides right and uh, underneath here I've got uh, people were asking about my uh, uh, salsify this is the unharvested salsify so uh, I don't know seeming a bit uh, you know the, the greenery looks like it's still growing a little bit I find that hard to believe but anyway it's the, the soil at least probing here at the top it does seem still a bit frozen yeah it's pretty frozen but I only domed this up a week ago so I think it's going to need a few weeks of having a proper dome so so basically this whole thing here was and that's a good example this whole thing I didn't have a dome initially I just threw this on and let, left it alone and the whole thing got covered in snow and it stayed like that for a number of weeks so you know, the, basically this plastic dome wasn't doing its work. It was just covered in snow and ice and the sun wasn't getting through. And if there's no sun, the dome really doesn't do much, as you can tell. I can, uh, is there somewhere I can get into this? Over here, maybe. Right in the center. Perhaps I can get in here. Yeah, okay, so we can get in a little bit there. Yeah. So it's starting to thaw, but uh, it's got a, bit, it got a ways to go. It's got to, <laughs> still got some work to do in here. Um, so you just keep your dome on good, and uh, you know let uh, let time let time do its magic sort of thing. There we go. I'll we'll check that in a few weeks and see if it's uh, managed to thaw out at all. Uh, here's another bed where I've got some carrots underneath this here. And uh, I'm sure there's many fanciful ways. I'm sure I could put some sort of rib here and bow this up and I've thought about ways to do it. But um, for this one here, uh, I found throwing this uh, watering can there <laughs> seems to be uh, sufficient. To create a bit of a bit of a dome, right? Pretty low tech, but you know sometimes low tech's good. So I just put a watering can there to sort of dome it up a little bit, and uh, otherwise you just you, know, you get a huge piece of ice here and snow, and it won't stay clear, and the light won't get through. The light's got to get through for these domes to really work their magic and keep the soil from thawing out. Another useful trick for uh, using these uh, domes is to use the snow to your advantage at every opportunity. Right? I mean, so you, every time it snows you have to come out with a broom and, and get, so that's a bit of a pain. You have to come, come out with a broom and get all the snow off the dome so the light can get through. But while you're doing that you can use the snow to your advantage and jam it in around the edges and basically fill all your little cracks and gaps and use it like an insulation, right? The sides, the front, and the back, you know, where, where the, um, the dome frame comes in contact with the soil. You can jam snow in there and insulate all those spaces so it creates kind of like an igloo in a sense, right? You're taking advantage of that, um, uh, you know, just the physics of all of that and the nature of snow, which is an excellent insulator. So uh, that's what I've done here and that's what I've done in other beds as well. Um, and it makes it, you know, it's, it's still, 
you would think it would freeze in place, but you can usually get it out with a little bit of, you know, just give it a bang sort of thing. Uh, this is where I've had my parsnips, and I have not opened this up in well over a month, basically since uh, sometime in December. So uh, I thought, and it's early in the morning right now, so uh, I'm not very, I t tend to be uh, cautiously optimistic or uh, real realistic might be the right term. Uh, it's been, it was very cold last night and uh, it's very possible. You know, I think what happens the, every day is that the top layer of the soil freezes and then if it's sunny, the sun shines in and it thaws out. And then at night it freezes again and then in the day it thaws out, depending on what kind of night you're having, right? So if you have a night where it's below zero, of course it's going to freeze a bit in there. There's, you know, there's a little bit of heat in here that's generated during the day, but this, uh, you know, six mil poly offers no real, it offers some insulation, I suppose, but not really that much. Uh, I would imagine that the temperature inside the dome is the same as the outside temperature within, you know, a couple hours of the sun going down, right? So all you're doing is freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing every single day. Uh, so, you know, it's almost like every day you have, uh, it becomes April and then it goes back to being uh, January. <laughs> but I've, I've found, you even come out here in uh, February sometimes and you can see worms active in the soil. Uh, and that's another, I guess I didn't mention that in the intro there, but another advantage of this is if you've got, uh, you know, a couple inches of soil, I wouldn't go, go any more than a couple inches of mulch for using this because you, you basically want, if you have too much mulch, uh, the soil is, is insulated from the heat you're creating inside that microclimate. So I've noticed a couple inches of seaweed or grass or something like that it seems to work pretty good. But if you pile on a whole bunch of hay or leaves, uh, the dome really doesn't have the effect you might think it would have. You need the sun heating up the soil. And if you've insulated the soil from the, the air, the warm air you're creating in there, it really doesn't do it properly. Uh, but yeah, there is some worm activity and there is some composting that happens. But anyway, let's... Uh, so. My point is we're going to pop this off, we're going to have a look. Uh, it may be the case that the soil is a bit too frozen to get the parsnips out. That's what I'm predicting. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. But if that is the case, I'll come back. Uh, I gotta go, I'm going to go do some ice fishing with my kids this morning, but uh, um, I'll come back maybe 2 or 3 in the afternoon, assuming I can pull this off. This, the weather's supposed to be no good tomorrow, so I have to do this today. And I'll give it another go at that point in time. And I guess for those that have noticed, I've I've slowed down with the frequency of videos. Uh, really, not for any lack of uh, reasons or ideas for videos. It's just, a, you know, this time of year, because it's, it's dark in the morning and it's dark at night, I could only film on the weekends. And uh, if uh, there's a snowstorm on one of those days, it might be there's only one day of the week I can film on. And if there's uh, other things in my life that are going on, uh, you know, my wife or my kids or whatever, right? Or maybe I'm not feeling well or, you know, <laughs> whatever's going on there's an interesting show on tv or whatever uh the videos don't get made right so um that's the only reason basically it's it's, it's the main constraint right now is the the short days and i've only got two days of the week where there's uh daytime hours that i've got a full-time job so there's only two days a week i can shoot and uh if something hijacks those two days then uh, i can't shoot videos so uh i'm so sorry for that i know people like uh the, I, I try to make one or two videos a week and i've been sort of uh, decreasing the frequency of that, but uh, uh, we'll, see, we'll see where things happen here. So let's pop this baby off and see what we got. If I can get into this thing. It's in there pretty good. Not want to come out. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to take the rope off. <laughs> oh, Greg. All right, there we go. All right. here. Get 
following trail. Yeah, so I can get in somewhat, but uh, boy, she's frozen up pretty good. Yeah, so I mean, I can get into the soil, right? And just for contrast sake, you know, the, the soil outside is, soil outside the dome is frozen, right? Soil inside the dome, accessible to some extent. I think this would probably be a little bit easier to do after the sun's been on in a few hours. But uh, I'd say it's frozen down about three inches. But uh, yeah, there's a parsnip. There's a parsnip. All right, so I mean, if we can do it. It's kind of a little bit hard on the hands because it's a bit cold outside today. <laughs> but. Uh, Definitely doable. There's a big one. Nice one there. I think that's it for that row. I had a viewer mention that uh, that she couldn't do this because her hands would freeze, and uh, you know it, it is hard on the hands being out. I mean that's one reason why I like to bring as much of my uh, root vegetable in, inside and have them in the cold room, sort of thing. Um, I mean this is just this is easier on the on the front end, right? You don't have to do anything, you, but it's harder on the other end because you have to come out here in the winter and uh, get them out of the ground. And, uh, I don't know that the flavors improve that much, but anyway, a couple tips on that sort of thing. It's important to keep your hands dry. So this is the third time I've stopped this film to bring the, put the heat back in my hands and change gloves and put dry, dry gloves on. Uh, I find these just cheap uh, cotton gloves are, are adequate, I guess. Um, it's around, I think, minus eight, minus six Celsius outside right now. Uh, wool would be better, but it costs more and I mean doing this sort of stuff is really hard on gloves So I mean, if you can get a cheap Sort of throwaway wool glove, that'd be great But these are you know one dollar gloves. I might get a couple seasons out of them and they start getting holes in them and stuff, right? Um, so But as long as they stay dry uh, They do a reasonably good job. You, you basically your hands will work for about 10 or 15 minutes. So it all depends on your own physiology and so on anyway, uh it's handy to have a pickaxe out doing stuff like that, but if you if you don't have a pickaxe, just some sort of you know any sort of mallet, even if you just got a, you know something heavy to rock or something to hit with, and uh, like a broom handle turned into a wedge like this, you can use to right, get into the soil, break it up. Don't know if I've got any more. Should have harvested all the ones around the edge here. I'm gonna assume that I did. Yeah, I did. So let's go over here. You can see there's a couple more here. I like using, uh, if you watch my videos in the summer when I'm harvesting things like carrots, I'll, I'll often use a wooden dowel in the garden because it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't really cut the uh, root edge. It's kind of gentle. It's just sort of ideal for getting in there, loosening things up. Now, of course, I could have made this a lot easier on myself uh, by simply uh, filming this later in the afternoon, but uh, it tends to be a lot windier uh, in the afternoon here So the, the best filming conditions are first thing in the morning before the wind picks up uh, so uh, well, That's always six of one half a dozen of the other isn't it? Anyway, this is still workable. I get my uh, uh, Exercise so that's good. I suppose Some people have a hard time uh, unless you're going to a gym or something uh, finding ways to get exercise in the winter I never seem to be uh, 
uh, challenged in that way. Now if I look a little awkward right now, it's also just because I'm filming them. If I wasn't filming, I'd just kick this off to the side and come at it from the other side, but i sort of got things set up for direction of the sun and camera angles and, and considerations like that, that uh, I could ordinar ordinarily care less about when I'm just out here doing gardening. Okay, we've got that row. That's the other thing too, when you're harvesting these in the fall, you gotta take all the, I mentioned this in previous videos, but if you're new here, uh, you gotta harvest all the ones that are like a hand span from the edge. At the edge of the bed, despite the dome and everything, everything like that, the edge of the bed's gonna freeze anyway. It's just more exposed. It's the center that's gonna stay workable. And I'm using a chisel here, but it's just because the top three inches are frozen. Once we get below that, it's, it's thawed, right? These other beds, they're probably frozen on a foot right now, right? So you're not, you're not getting into the soil on these other ones. Uh, we could do an experiment and have a look under the snow and see what's going on in the other beds, but I would predict that would be the case, right? So uh, I'll only need a couple more for a decent, Decent meal of parsnips. Where's the next row of them? Right here, I see one. Start from the side here. I planted these in rows with uh, uh, cardboard strips in between the rows to keep the weeds down. So the cardboard's mostly broken down, but there's still a little bit kicking around. But it's good because it helps me, uh, you know, know where the know where the parsnips are. <laughs> so it actually served double purpose. I don't know what variety I planted. Two varieties in this bed, Albion and uh, uh, Hollow Crown or Triple Crown. I can't remember the term. I think it's Hollow Crown. Um, anyway, they seem to have worked out okay. Uh, one more. Anyway, you can see how much more effective this uh, little broom, pointy, pointy broom handle stick is, is on getting through that top little bit. Right. I have a bunch of these stored inside as well. Parsnip, there's a good one. Three inches at the top. Uh, but I decided I was going to use up the ones that were outside before the before using the ones that were stored inside in the event that this gets so frozen I just can't get in here you know if we had a stretch of two or three weeks with not a lot of sun like overcast snowy foggy days things like that and all below zero this would just freeze <laughs> right so these domes are good but they uh, they're not uh, a perfect solution to your soil freezing you know stacking huge bales of hay over or something like that is probably um, the best but that's that uh, also has its own uh, pluses and minuses as well. The main reason, I, mean, I mentioned this in the previous video, one of the main reasons I'm using these is that I got them anyway. So I might as well use them to sort of extend the, the harvest season of my root vegetables, and it's working, right? Um, if I have time this afternoon, I'll come out and just show the contrast. I'll come out and harvest a couple more um, after the sun. It's supposed to be sunny all day today, so I'll come out and, assuming it stays sunny all day, so it's a good example of that. Uh, but I'll come out in the afternoon after it's been the sun's been shining here all day, and try to harvest a few more and see if we we need the old uh, mallet and chisel, <laughs> wooden chisel, uh, at that point in time. Here's another uh, type of uh, dome, I guess you could call it, or hoop house, uh, that I built. Uh, without wiry mesh. So this is just using, I think the entire thing is made from one by three and two by three. And you know, building it was kind of like building a boat. I'll put a link to how I built this one uh, at the end of this video. Um, but uh, the reason I built this one this way was, uh, you know, if you don't have a, a truck and you've only got a car, um, you can't put wiry mesh in a car. It's just too big, it's, it's in a four by eight sheet. Uh, you'd have to have a friend with a truck or get it delivered or so on and so forth. So I thought, uh, what if someone just had plastic and something they could fit in a car? Because you can put uh, eight foot lengths of, um, you know, one by three and two by three in a car, put the back seat down and slide in sort of thing. So I made this here thing. And actually it's, it's got some advantages uh, over the wire remesh in that it's, it's, it's consistently higher. 
So I use this for starting my, um, my tomatoes uh, in the spring because they can grow to a foot high before I have to take it off so they get a really good long time in here. Uh, so this is the bed where I intend to plant tomatoes next year. I planted them in that bed uh, the, you know, the previous growing season, I'm going to plant them in this bed. Um, so this bed will be at least a month ahead of all the other beds out here uh, when things thaw out. And uh, I can sow the tomatoes under here and, uh, and, and leave them under. I basically sow twice as many tomatoes as could grow under here. And then when I'm thinning them out, I move the ones I've thinned to other places. So this is sort of like a little uh, greenhouse for tomatoes. <laughs> Right? So it works really well, and uh, for me, I prefer this approach to uh, using, um, you know, growing them indoors and stuff like that for reasons I've talked about in lots of videos, not going to get into here. Uh, it works for me, and I find it easier. So, uh, yeah, just another design using uh, one by threes, and I'm sure there's dozens of different ways to pull this off. This was just the way I figured it out. Um, I, I thought, what was the fastest, easiest, uh, least complicated way I could possibly throw, slap this together using one by uh, two by three and one by three, and this is what I arrived at. Now, of course, if I made another one, I'd make it a little bit better. <laughs> anyway, just a few tips and tricks on uh, using, taking advantage of, uh, maintaining uh, various forms of microclimates, hoop houses, and stuff like that. Uh, in, in your garden. If, if you're in a northern situation, if you have a very short growing season um, and you got some degree of sunlight during the day, um, you might want to think about building a couple of these things. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you have a bed that's completely frozen and you can get it on the ground in February, um, you know, it'll, you'll notice a big difference. <laughs> Even if your bed's covered in snow and let's say it's, it's not going to get above zero, um, if, you, if you or a friend of yours has a wood stove, just sprinkle a little bit of wood ash on top of the snow to make it dark in color. And put the dome over top. And uh, the snow, if, you, if you've got some sun, uh, your snow will be melted in a week or so. And, uh, you know, uh, the thing will thaw out and you can plant, start planting your cold hardy things a lot earlier than you might think. Uh, especially things like spinach, lettuce, really tough things like that. You can get them going really early. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Don't forget to click the bell uh, if you want to be notified when I make new videos. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs>